Okay, we are continuing now. Our next um, presentation is a shorter version, just uh, 15 minutes. Um, and we're happy to welcome someone here to talk about the engine for excellence with automation on the fast lane to operational success. What does that mean? Well, the man to talk about that is Andrew Filiff, and he is here now. Give him a warm round of applause. There you go. All right, thank you. Welcome, everybody. Uh, I will mostly talk about automation um, in the digital office um, after amazing presentation um, uh, by Dr. Quent. My, my next one will be focused more on the workplace and, and what we do there. So first, a little bit of my, my personal background. Um, I manage a company called Reich. We do collaborative work management software. We have more than 16,000 companies uh, as paid customers worldwide in more than 100 countries. Uh, and through working with them, we try to solicit the best practices of how to manage modern teams and how to excel in this new digital environment. Uh, I personally live in Silicon Valley, California, and a little uh, fun fact that on their personal side of things, uh, I'm a big um, fan of AI and robotics, and I actually had a team that competed in DARPA Robotics Challenge. So uh, I view AI both from the work context, but a little bit more on the fun side in their um, kind of in the more industrial setting uh, settings as well. And for today's session, I'll try to work, uh, I'll, I'll try, to, try to walk you through what are the best companies that we are aware of, what are they doing to automate digital work, why it's important, and what steps could you take today? So some very simple best practices that you could apply literally tomorrow when you get back to the office. Uh, before I jump into that, why is this relevant? I personally think of the modern work as a combination of two things that are uh, opposite to each other. So whenever you're building a great business, um, it's a, on one side you have this creative chaos phase where you've got, you innovate, you've got your best people coming up with brilliant ideas, you're testing them on the market, and then if those ideas work, the benefit of the digital economy is that you have infinite scale. And then you get into this very, very, very rapid race of scaling it um, to thousands of customers or millions of consumers. And that's what the best companies do. And not even that, they're not just doing it at the macro level, they're literally doing it in their very, very small cycles every week. So some of the companies here, and I know some of them are a little bit controversial here in Europe, but they literally revolutionized whole industries in a very short time frame. Uber changed how the taxi works in the United States and some, some other countries in the world. Airbnb changed how a lot of people book their vacations and sometimes even business day. And the list goes, go, goes on and on and on. So all of these companies, one thing they've nailed is scaling their digital processes to now when they have thousands of employees and millions of uh, consumers. And so it, it is the critical skill where we've seen companies master it and be successful and we've also seen teams where which did not master it, and they're right now drowning in stress and drowning in sort of work, long working hours, uh, a little bit like hamsters in the wheel, right? Where they're doing a lot of great work, but for some reason there's more work every day than they can cope with. For me, they're, um, sorry, let me, hello, okay. Um, so for me, there, there are several critical principles that you could apply to get to that benefit of automation. The first one, and this sounds very obvious, but you have to have the single source of truth which everybody can tap into. Uh, otherwise, you get into this very funny scenario where uh, I like to joke that in digital economy, you would think that information travels at the speed of light. In most companies that I know of, it travels at the speed of meetings. You meet on Monday morning, your knowledge spikes up, and then through the week it goes down. So in order to avoid that, you need a single source of truth where irregardless of where you are, where your employee is, uh, she can open her mobile device or her laptop and get to that knowledge and that time at that place. And so I can't stress how important it is. It sounds obvious, but a lot of the digital offices today still operate on email and, e emails and spreadsheets. We, we have... Uh, as a company, there are about 30,000 businesses that, new businesses that try our product every month, new teams. 
uh, and most of them is what we call greenfield, where they literally the only system of record they have is emails and spreadsheets. And so here is a very interesting case study. Uh, Peter works for IBM, and he runs about 1,500 events gr globally every year. Uh, and he built a system where he tracks for every single event how it's going. It's still agile, where every event is a little bit different, but he knows exactly where things stand with every single one of his um, projects. The next, uh, hello. All right, so, so it is very important to recognize, once you have the system of truth, system of record, it is very important to recognize the repeatable pattern. Because in this digital world, you, you are required to move much faster. And the only way to succeed is you're breaking these long work cycles into the smaller ones. When I started my software career, we had one year, two, three year work cycles. Our releases were two year long. Right now, in my company, we literally push the software code to production every day. So the work cycles have shifted, and we as a team operate. We've got 20 software teams in our company, and they operate in their two-week uh, sprint cycle. So the work cycle shifted from two years to two weeks. I see the same picture in marketing, where it was strategic campaigns that were planned for a year, delivered through TV ads. And right now, again, in our own company, we run 1,000 A-B tests each year. It's multi-channel. It's very data-driven. It's personalized. And all of our customers are doing the same. So when you have a lot of those smaller wor work cycles, every single one of them is unique. Otherwise, you wouldn't do it. But every a lot of them have commonalities. And you have to recognize those repeatable patterns. And that gives you the basis to automate. And that's, again, very, very simple idea that you can apply tomorrow. Uh, but it's very powerful, and we, we saw how it changed uh, operations for a lot of our customers. And so you would build templates that streamline the process. Um, and again, here's uh, w w w one of the examples where, based on their input from the customer, you can automatically instantiate the right template. So for example, if you run in a design team that does a uh, hundred of projects per quarter, based on what their incoming request is, you can automatically instantiate the right template and, and thus create the right guardrails to, to do the work. Next one, and I, I'm, I'm jumping a little bit from topic to topic, but I wanted to give you like three or four actionable ideas that you can take and apply again tomorrow. So one other area which we saw a lot of lost time and productivity is, is in gathering requirements. So in the digital work, workplace, what often happens is somebody sends another person an email or a Slack message. And I, I call this the hot potato problem, right? It's like, like, now it's your problem instead of mine. I send you that Slack message, and you deal with it. And so what happens is the person on the receiving end, they got this constant barrage of emails and Slack messages, and they have to somehow process them all and all of them have incomplete information. So what happens is, uh, you, on the receiving end, you end up hunting for all that data. And your manager asks you, what have you done through the day? What have you done through the week? And you're like, I don't know. I've been working. I've been working 10 hours a day. I've been working at night. And I still, and the, and I still haven't done what I'm assuming. Because there's a lot of that hidden work. So when it comes to the repetitive work, it's important to turn it from that hidden work to the work that you can track. And one of the best things you could do there is upfront, you can take the requirements in. So you can create some dynamic forms in whatever tool you use. You can use something as simple as Google Forms, and you can use enterprise systems. You can use ours. There's plenty of choices. But you can create dynamic forms that would capture what your customer, and that, by, when I say customer, it might be internal stakeholder, what they want from you and your team. Uh, next great example of lost productivity is in reviews and approval. We regularly do surveys for th with thousands of respondents on what bothers them at work and what makes them productive. And one of the biggest pain points that we've, we've heard from people is they get frustrated when they have to wait for others. It's either they're missing the information from somebody to do their work, and we covered that with their single source of truth, and we covered that with the work intake, or they're waiting for reviews and approvals. And you know it takes them a day to create this beautiful thing, and then it takes two weeks to get this beautiful thing approved. So 
reviews and approvals uh, is a big opportunity to accelerate the digital workflow. Here's an example of Airbnb. Uh, they recently, maybe about a year ago, a little bit more, they launched a second, their second product called, uh, back then it was called Trips, right now it's called Experiences. Uh, so it's curated tour guides. And when they were launching those products, they were relying on emails and spreadsheets. Uh, and that was all right when they wanted to launch their first five cities. But when they wanted to go globally to their first 50 cities, it's not scalable because as part of that work, they had to connect 16 different teams, including getting legal approval on those creative assets. Um, and, and that's usually the case in any in any sizable company, you got multiple stakeholders, you got quality assurance, you can have CMO, you can have legal, you can have sometimes sales as a stakeholder, sometimes engineering. So getting those approvals, again, sometimes takes weeks. And when you're in this fast-paced world where you got to ship something every day, every couple of weeks, you need to streamline that. So moving that to digital and giving people ability to just you know, pull out their phone or push to their phone and have them you know, being able to circle something and say, I like it, I don't like it, can buy you a lot of uh, valuable time and uh, save you from a lot of frustration. Another important point, uh, and, and hopefully, you know, I'm, I'm going fast, but hopefully I can inspire you to research more. Uh, we've seen customers where business users are now doing in months something that previously took IT quarters and years to build. So this is uh, Airbnb again. Uh, our champion there is not an IT person. And he was able to use third party tool called Azuqua. And there are some others. There's Workata, there's Uniter, there's a simple one called Zapier. So he was able to use a very inexpensive uh, cloud tool to build workflows that automate different parts of his system. And the benefit of that, IT probably could do it better. But the benefit of him doing that is that in the digital world, he evolves his process very rapidly. So when he does that, it's not just about creating the, the most beautiful thing. It's about the fact that a month in, he can come in and introduce a new step, ch change one of the steps, plug in a different system. So I, I want you to uh, be inspired. If, 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 when the creative director can do that, I'm sure everybody in this audience um, can do that as well. So today it is possible to do some of those automations uh, by yourself in cloud and very, very uh, inexpensively. And so, so that concludes their pragmatic part of my presentation where, again, I wanted to inspire you, give you several ideas that you can apply tomorrow. Uh, and that's single source of truth, that's work intake, that's review and approvals, and that's definitely templates and that self-service automations. Um, I also wanted to talk a little bit about the future. So in my space, in the digital work, uh, the three most interesting areas where we see development and we also invest um, our own time and effort is monitoring those workflows and predicting potential trouble spots. And some of that doesn't even require a PhD in machine learning. So if you've got a digital workflow, and more stuff goes into some step than goes out of some step, you know, you, you, need, you need sort of first grade uh, math to know that something is going to blow up. So some of those predictive indicators are very, very simple, and you could think about them today as long, again, as long as you have a track and you, as long as you have the system of record. Uh, second, uh, this is where we're get, getting more sophisticated. You can use machine learning models to rely on the historical data to predict the future one. So for example, if you're going through the same repetitive projects over and over again, you can very soon predict how long they will take. And you can also easily detect outliers and create sort of more insightful reports based on that. Um, and last but not least, you can use natural language processing to help you extract uh, some of the data and, more, and do more of a routine work. Uh, and then another question that I get all the time um, is how this will affect digital workers. Uh, people sometimes get scared when it, it comes to robots and machines. Um, and I can tell you, again, I, I know a lot about AI. And there are three areas where computers are very, very far away from helping us. And that's creativity, strategy, and empathy. And most of their knowledge worker jobs either rely on that today, or as, as more and more automations happen, 
the job shifts to that aspect. Uh, one of the best examples is data scientists. What I can do today on the data front it, with free tools in 30 minutes would take me years and millions of dollars to do 10 years ago. And at the same time, we still have more data scientist jobs than ever, and it's one of the hottest jobs on the market. So automations and tools more often than not create more digital work than they actually substitute because they open up the whole new level of possibilities. And that concludes my 15 minutes. So if you want to ask a question, um, find me later and be, I'll be happy to answer. All right, thank you, Mr. Fowler, thank you.